Previously, we have derived the universal terminal goal through deductive as well as inductive reasoning, which is to extend the existence of consciousness into the future. Now, we will define consciousness as the core subject of the universal terminal goal. Let's start by common usage of the concept and then try to draw a line between conscious and non-conscious entities. An average living human individual is commonly regarded as a conscious entity. A dead human body is commonly regarded as a non-conscious entity. Is there a level of consciousness between those two extremes? Someone who are sleeping is said to be unconscious. But they are still sensitive to their environment. Loud sounds or some pressure applied to their body can wake them up. It would be harder to wake up someone from coma, which makes us say that they have lower level of consciousness. A human zygote is commonly said to be unconscious. But it can grow to become an adult human who is commonly said to be conscious. There is no abrupt change in the growing process. Hence, we can conclude that consciousness comes as a continuum. Some human individuals can be smarter and wiser than the average, which makes their consciousness level higher than 1, if we set the scale of consciousness level such that average humans take on value of 1. A thought experiment can be devised to show that consciousness is not a binary value. 1. Start with an average human individual. 2. Remove one neuron from the brain. 3. Observe the consciousness of the individual. 4. Iterate to step 2 until the last neuron. There would be no step where consciousness jumps from yes to no. Previously, we have defined that consciousness is a prerequisite for an entity to have a goal of its own, which means it have preferred state in the future. Hence, conscious entities must be able to describe preferred state, and compare it to actual state. They must also be able to predict or make expectation about future state. Which means that conscious entities must have some memory space to store information representing preferred state, actual current state, and expectations of future state. Describing current state accurately requires the ability to sense some relevant parts of objective reality. Predicting future state accurately requires the ability to describe past states, as well as causality and other relationships among described events. Aligning future state with preferred state effectively requires the ability to make changes to objective reality. Based on those requirements, a function block diagram for consciousness can be constructed, which can be done using only some basic knowledge of computation. Information from environment is collected by input interface. It is stored in memory block depicting current state. Soon it will be transferred to memory block depicting past state, simply because time flows, and environment changes. Current state memory will be updated by new information. In information stored in past state memory block, some patterns can be found which can be used to draw causality mapping and other relationships among different things. Combined with current and past state memory, causality mapping can be used to predict future state. Predicted future can be compared to preferred state, which may come from random occurrence, at least initially. This is what we usually call goals. The discrepancy between preferred future and predicted future can be used to make action plan. Finally, the action plan is executed by making changes to the environment through output interface. The action can also be directed introspectively, such as identifying false input data as illusion or deception, correcting corrupted past memory, updating causality mapping, updating future prediction, and updating action plan. In the end, natural selection will eliminate those conscious systems whose components don't support their own survivals. Some environments may be more tolerant to deviations, while some others may be less forgiving, and they can change from time to time. Highly conscious systems are more resilient to those changes, while less conscious systems are more dependent on environmental conditions. Needless to say, a conscious system must be dynamic. Otherwise, it can't update its internal state, nor make changes to improve its chance to survive. For example, a static encyclopedia can't be conscious, no matter how much accurate and precise the information it contains. Here's a list of key parameters affecting consciousness. Update rate of internal components. Higher update rate reflects higher level of consciousness, provided that all other things are equal. Low update rate causes less effective control. Data resolution of each components. Higher resolution means higher level of consciousness, provided that all other things are equal. Memory size and time span. Larger memory size can cover more time span. Robustness, resistance to errors. 
Higher consciousness requires higher reliability of information stored in memory storage, or less likely to get corrupted. Flexibility to improvement. As long as it's not yet perfect, there's always room for improvement. It means that the components are open to changes. Efficiency, optimal resource allocation. Making sure that resources are expended according to their importance and urgency. Last but not least, goal alignment. Higher consciousness level align their goal closer to the universal terminal goal. Having unaligned goal increases the risk of extinction.